So AMD's FSR 3.1 is finally here, and while it's only a 0.1 release, it is actually quite a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Well, prior to FSR 3.1, FSR upscaling and FSR frame generation were coupled together. You couldn't run FSR frame generation with, say, DLSS upscaling. But now, with FSR 3.1, you have that flexibility. This isn't just good news for owners of AMD GPUs, but also owners of, say, NVIDIA 3000 series GPUs, as they now have the power to use DLSS upscaling, which, let's be honest, is a really good upscaler. Um, but now that can be ran in concert with FSR frame generation. Keep in mind that NVIDIA's frame generation technology is exclusive to the 4000 series. Now, a few Sony games on the PC have been updated to take advantage of FSR 3.1 so far, so it is quite slim pickings right now in terms of the games that are available. So today we're going to give it a test in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. To start out, I'm going to be running this on my main gaming PC, which is a 5800X3D with a 4080 Super, and we're running 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL16 memory. I'll put FPS numbers up the top via MSI Afterburner, um, but the point of this video isn't really to obsess over FPS too much. It's more to see the visual differences between the technologies. Anyway, let's jump in. So let's get a baseline with us running natively at 4K on the very high preset. Obviously in terms of image quality with no upscaling, no frame generation, this is really a best case scenario. And you can see here we're at around the 80 to 100 FPS mark, which isn't bad, all things considered. One thing you should be aware of is that I'm capturing all of this footage on a separate streaming slash recording PC that I've got going on, which captures at 60 frames a second. So it might look weird sometimes if the game is running at a much higher frame per second. Uh, and obviously the PC is capturing at 60, but rest assured, um, that's uh, only the capture card being weird and it's not representative of actual gameplay. Should there be a point during these tests where I feel the gameplay feels off or a bit weird, I'll be sure to specifically call that out. So that's our baseline. Now let's see what happens if we introduce some upscaling. So here we have FSR upscaling on the left and we've got DLSS upscaling on the right. Neither of these have any kind of frame generation at play at the moment. So this is just an upscaling comparison so we can see any differences going on here before we start introducing things like frame generation. Now, YouTube compression is going to cause us some issues here uh, in terms of what you can see. You're going to have to kind of take my word for a lot of this, unfortunately. Um, so first up, we're getting a nice frame boost from both FSR and DLSS. I think it's um, fair to say DLSS still has the edge, especially when it comes to transparent objects, kind of like this holographic loop thing that's around Ratchet on this uh, floating platform here. There seems to be a lot of detail that gets missed with FSR. So I think it's probably fair to say that DLSS has the visual advantage but I don't think that will come as a surprise really to, to many of you. DLSS has you know, long been considered to be a really solid upscaling technology. Not trying to throw FSR under the bus here. It's still a very good option. Um, and kind of once you're into the game and actually playing the game rather than just obsessing it over everything and pixel peeping everything, FSR actually does a solid job of giving you a really good you know, gameplay experience while giving you a really nice high FPS boost. Now let's take a look at FSR frame generation. So we're going to take our FSR upscaling that we've just seen, which was in quality mode, and we're going to add on some FSR frame generation on top of that. Now it goes without saying we're seeing a really nice bump to the FPS, but there is a hit to the image quality. If we freeze frame and zoom in a bit, you can see that we're getting some trails on Ratchet's arms, as well as what appears to be trails, um, especially on the... Uh, foot there of clank now if we compare and contrast to a pure nvidia setup that is to say dlss quality mode with dlss frame gen on top we can see that it is a much much cleaner image so if we're comparing a pure amd solution to a pure nvidia solution i think the points have to go to nvidia now, one of the key features of FSR 3.1 is that you can decouple FSR upscaling from FSR frame generation. So for the avoidance of doubt, let's uh, compare the same scene using DLSS quality upscaling with FSR 3.1 frame generation on top of that. And as you can see, it looks much, much cleaner versus what we were seeing with the FSR upscaling and the FSR frame generation. So then perhaps it's not the frame generation from FSR that's causing the ghosting artifacts. Maybe it's the upscaling. So to test this, we're going to go back and we're going to look at the same part of the game 
with just FSR upscaling turned on, on quality mode, with no frame generation of any kind. And yeah, there it is, there's the ghosting. You can see it on Ratchet's tail um, and very faintly under Clank's right foot. So it would seem that the FSR upscaler is the cause of the ghosting in motion, which surprises me. Um, I immediately suspected the frame generation as, you know, given how frame generation kind of works, you would think that that would be the more likely culprit. Um, let me know in the comments if you've got any more information um, regarding this. I'll be keen to hear from you. Uh, but I honestly thought it was going to be the frame generation, but I guess every day is a school day. So if you're running a 4000 series NVIDIA GPU, I think it's fairly solid advice at this point just to use NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling with DLSS frame generation if you want to use those technologies at all. However, not everyone has a 4000 series GPU. And I don't mean just AMD owners. I'm talking about, say, owners of a 3000 series GPU. Despite FSR not being quite as good, as DLSS when we start pixel peeping it it's still a really good technology for improving your performance and if you're not running side by side comparisons you know between DLSS and FSR and actually just playing your games instead of obsessing over them constantly it is a really good way to up your FPS. Now I've got a streaming PC which has a 3070 in it alongside a 5600X so it's a bit more of a modest build compared to my main gaming PC that we've been running on so far in this video. And given that we're running a 3000 series GPU, NVIDIA's frame generation is obviously off, off the cards. Um, but now with FSR 3.1, we've got a few more options. Uh, we could run FSR upscaling and put frame gen on top of it. Or thanks to FSR 3.1, we could run DLSS upscaling alongside FSR frame generation. A combination which, as we just saw, give some pretty good results, all things considered. Now you'll have to forgive me for reasons that aren't at all interesting. Um, I'm having to point a camera at the TV, which is uh, obviously my streaming PC that's running it now. Um, so here we are running at 4K on the medium preset, medium because it is only a 3070 after all. Uh, we've got DLSS running in quality mode with FSR frame generation on top of that. And you can see we've got frames up in you know, the 80s, which is pretty good. If we move to 1440p, um, you can see we're now getting around the 120s and the game feels great. I can't really sense any noticeable input lag. Uh, we can even crank it to the very high preset at 1440p and we're still getting comfortably above 60 FPS up into the 80s, sometimes the 90s. It doesn't feel quite as nice to play uh, compared to when we had it on the medium preset. As with frame gen, the higher your base FPS, kind of pre-frame generation, the better it's going to feel um, after the frame generation has taken effect. And finally, if we leave DLSS on at quality and turn off the FSR frame generation, uh, this is on the high preset, you can see we're at around 60 FPS, but sometimes dipping beneath, which I think kind of sums up FSR 3.1's value proposition. Sure, it might not be as snazzy as Nvidia's DLSS, but if you're on an AMD card or an older Nvidia card, you can get some fairly solid results thanks to the ability to decouple the upscaling from the frame generation. You can run DLSS upscaling on an older Nvidia card and add on FSR frame gen on top. Or if you're on an AMD card and maybe FSR upscaling isn't quite to your liking, you could maybe run Intel's XESS upscaling and throw FSR's upscaling on top of that. While it would be all too easy for owners of the 4000 series to kind of look down their nose at FSR 3.1, I do think it offers real benefits to a lot of real users out there. And the fact that AMD even allows this to run on competing GPUs at all is you know, really so refreshing in this day and age. So I say good job AMD and keep at it. We frankly need more like this. Thanks so much for watching, folks. If you've enjoyed the video, hitting that like button really does help the video and the channel a ton. It'd be massively appreciated and it's free and be sure to get subbed so you don't miss out on any future videos. Until next time, take the very best care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.